are you aware of the th- flaws of communist countries historically and the mass death that has occurred in communist countries as a result of communism Mm -hmm. you are but you still wear the communist logos on your t-shirt how the hell did we get here what the hell is happening in our public schools right now now the last time we saw this guy his name is warren smith secret scholar society is his youtube channel and you'll remember he uh, sat and talked through with a student about their uh, presupposition that J.K. Rowling was a bigot. And by the end of the video, by saying, well, what did she do that was a bigot? Well, what did she say? Well, what did this? What did that? And what do you think of that? The kid who he was talking to, I think it's a college student, basically said, oh, well, okay, yeah, I guess that's wrong. Again, a great example of talking through with facts and logic in a reasonable way about presuppositions that people all have to assume and and take on as their conventional wisdom. Everybody knows Trump's a racist. Well, hold on a minute. Let's talk that through for a second. Uh, this is exactly how we grownups should be talking with people. Uh, and uh, Warren Smith has a great new version of that. It has to do with one of the students that he saw in his classroom wearing uh, Soviet and communist paraphernalia. You know, we see these guys with Che Guevara shirts all the time without even knowing who Che Guevara is. By the way, before this video is shot, uh, Warren had to respond to people who were, you know, ticked off about the lighting, because what you're going to see here is uh, nothing but the light coming through the back window behind him. He said, sorry about the lighting. The camera was on auto and adjusted to the light outside the window automatically. It was a bit spontaneous. So here's that spontaneous conversation. Are you aware of the flaws of communist countries historically and the mass death that has occurred in communist countries as a result of communism Mm -hmm. you are but you still wear the communist logos on your t-shirts yeah um okay so i am aware of that i'm not i'm not condoning that at all like i do not like when like a lot of people die that's not a good thing um it's basically the idea for me, honestly. Like I'd think about the idea and I'd think that's cool. Mm. It's kind of a cultural thing for me. Like I do like the culture around it. I like um, how sometimes they like get like a bunch of people together, make them basically like patriots, you know? Like the overall idea of communism, I kind of like like the free health care, like no landlords, you know? This is going to be good, I promise, and it's really well-reasoned, and you're going to like how this goes, but I am going to interrupt once in a while, because even that, I just like the cultural implications around the hammer and sickle. This is a kid in college. How the hell did we get here? What the hell is happening in our public schools right now? How do people, how do kids get out of high school without recognizing the evil that the hammer and sickle has represented for the last hundred years? From the tens of millions murdered by Mao to the tens of millions murdered by Stalin to North Korea to Cuba to Venezuela to anyway, yeah, how how can you wear communist paraphernalia? And say, well, I just like the cultural implications around it. it. It's just it still boggles my mind. I know I'm being naive because I actually think that there should be an education linked with our public schools, which there isn't not an actual education about history or facts or anything like that. But every once in a while, when I hear something like that from someone who's the age of one of my children, I just, I just, I want to scream. But how, oh, let's watch how this is handled. So what makes you think that healthcare is free because someone has to pay for it. So where does that money come from in a communist country? Um, the state would pay for it. And, and where does um, the state get the money? From taxes, taxes, right? So where do the taxes come from? The people. So the, are the people paying for the health care? To an extent, yeah. How would you define communism? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would define it as a society that would give you a job based on your needs and abilities. So it would actually be the government controlling the means of production. Pretty much. Right. So as opposed to capitalism, 
where it is a competitive marketplace based on individuals striving in their for their own interests. Communism would be the interest of the state over the individual. So it sounds like you like the idea of the group rather than the individual because you're concerned about the individual, but have you considered what that would actually be like, how that would impact your personal freedoms and your ability to conduct yourself? I have thought about that. And what are your thoughts on that? So since I have personally had struggles with finding jobs, I think that that would be a good thing for people like me so then they could get basically assigned a job so then they can make a living. So would you rather be assigned a job or rather have the free choice to choose the job that fulfills your passion and your interests? Uh, that's kind of a tricky question. I don't know if I'm really the best person to ask about this because honestly, since I have had trouble, had troubles finding jobs in the past, I think it would be nice to have like that extra help. Because the, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this because the pattern I've seen with unions, for example, in Hollywood. So you have to be within a union. If you are in, within a union and you take a non-union job, you get blacklisted by that union, which is the pattern we see in communist countries. So the recent writer's strike resulted in mandates where you have to have, if I'm going to create a television show, I have, I'm required to have a certain number, seven writers on the show, which then drives up costs, which then makes it more expensive to produce the shows, which then means fewer actual job opportunities. I'm not sure if we fully, if these students fully understand what can occur. Yeah, like if it's not, like if it's not done properly and like there's a person in the higher ups who's super greedy, it can ruin like the whole idea of it. And I've seen that before in some countries, like Pol Pot basically killed half his population. Like I don't agree with those actions. Like the idea, like the idea of communism is good, but if someone commits actions like that, then it's not a good thing. Hey, at least you knew who Pol Pot was. I'm going to give him that. That's impressive, right? He must have seen a movie or something. But do you do you see how when when pressed on exactly what communism does and what works and what doesn't work and what's evil and what isn't evil and what violates your freedoms and what doesn't violate freedoms, the whole thing boiled down to it appears that uh, they'll help you find a job if you're having trouble. I, I just like that. I had trouble finding a job, and I think I'd like the extra help. Help? So I've had trouble finding a job. I want extra help. So let's just hand over the control of all means of production and capital in our society to the state. And I do like that. You know, as long as there's not somebody greedy at the top, Hey, a quick follow-up question. Setting aside your Pol Pot example, which is a really good one, can you show me any example of communism over the course of the last, what are we going on, 115, 120 years now since it started in the Soviet Union? First time it was actually tried in full force. Can you show me any example, just one example, where that didn't happen? Because it seems to happen every single time, every single country that institutes this great utopian nirvana of, you know, a job fair. It's just a job fair, really. It's just helping people get jobs. Can you show me any example where it hasn't actually been a murderous, totalitarian, authoritarian regime where those at the top end up being the greedy overlords over everybody else. And hey, if you have to crack a few eggs to make an omelet and people are slaughtered for the benefit of helping the state and we're the only few who are actually in charge of the state, so certainly it benefits us, but don't you know we're your superiors, even though I claim to treat everybody equally? Well, if those few eggs need to be cracked and people have to die to serve the state, that's a small price to pay. How many countries, over how many decades do we have to see this happen over and over and over and over again? And you still get a brain full of mush, as Rush Limbaugh used to call them, responding like this. But I'm glad that Warren Smith, this is a great video. He has really great videos. You should subscribe over at Secret Scholar Society. 
I'm glad that he asked some pretty pertinent questions and didn't just let this guy walk past him wearing a hammer and sickle and maybe Che Guevara or whatever other kind of communist paraphernalia they had. And he just said, hey, can I talk to you about this? I'm curious. What's the deal with that? Oh, well, you know, I like the free health care. Really? Where's that free health care come from? I mean, that one got dispensed with quickly. And then as you start chipping away and chipping away, ultimately, the real power of a communist state is that if you're having trouble finding a job, they'll help you get one. And that's how nations are toppled.